This is the last section of chapter 3, and it's very different than 3.1 to 3.3. So in 3.1 to 3.3, we've been given all of these rational functions, and we've been told, okay, do the full analysis, tell me everything you know about it, and then tell me what it looks like. But in 3.4, we're actually just going to solve. So that means I want to know what x is, and x could be a number or an entire range of numbers. Okay, we've seen something like this before in the end of um, chapter 2, I think it was chapter 2.6, where they asked us to solve for equations and inequalities. So why are we doing it again? Well, in 2.6 it might have looked something like this, where you had polynomials but no fractions. This time we're actually going to solve for fraction equations and fraction inequalities. So we're going to be looking more at things like that. All right, it's very similar. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it up into two videos, one on equations and one on inequalities. That means that this one's going to have to wait until the next video. I'll show you these two right now. Okay, so these two are expressions. There's no equal signs. That means I just want to simplify them by putting them together. So here's a fraction minus another fraction. We need a common denominator here, and I'm thinking probably 24. So if I want this to be a 24, I'm going to multiply it by 8. And I got to multiply this one by 3. So I got both of the bottoms. Now they're similar. But if I multiply the bottom by 8, I got to multiply the top by 8 because I need that equivalent fraction. Same with these guys. Okay, so there's my equivalent fraction. And I'm going to simplify by putting them together. And I get 11 over 24. If I have something with x's, like all the steps are exactly the same. You still want that common denominator. So I'm thinking the common denominator will just be these two put together. So we'll see something like this. All right, so notice that I have the x plus 1 and x minus 3 together, but this guy was missing an x minus 3, so we've multiplied it. If we do that, we've got to do the same to the top, and that's why I have two red brackets. This one was missing an x plus 1, so I'm going to multiply that, but then we've got to do the same to the top. So then notice I have two green brackets down here. All right, now it's time for the simplifying. So you've got to simplify each bracket by expanding and then putting things together. So expand through distributive law or FOIL. Make sure that you keep them in brackets because this minus is there and it's going to change all the symbols for the second bracket. So all the green stuff is going to change to opposite symbols. That's like the biggest mistake I normally see from tests and quizzes is a lot of people forget to um, change the symbols after that negative opens up the bracket. Okay, so I always keep the bottoms um, factored still because it allows us to see any um, restrictions or any vertical asymptotes from the bottom. Okay, so expanded and now you're going to simplify and put things together. If you can factor the top and cancel it out with one of the brackets on the bottom, definitely do that because it's going to be one of the um, holes, okay? So how are we going to solve now? Because those were expressions. Now I want to talk about equations. Equations means that you have an equal sign and there's something on either side of the equal sign. So in order to do these, we can cross multiply, but you're only allowed to cross multiply if you have one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right. So if you have other stuff back here, you got to put them all together into one whole thing before you can start to cross multiply. So here I have four examples. I'm not going to go through each of them, um, but maybe I'll just show you how it would start each one. I'll go through the entire number 1a with you. Okay, so here's 1a. I have a fraction on the left and I have a fraction on the right and there's an equal sign in the middle. So I'm just going to cross multiply. I'm going to take this one times this one. So I've done that in red right here. And there they are. Then you write an equal sign. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cross and multiply the other two. So when I multiply those ones, I put that in green right there. Okay, so the fractions are gone, which makes us really happy. And what you're going to do now is you're just going to solve for x. So let's open up these brackets by doing FOIL or distributive law. So I'll open this one up too. Then you're going to bring all of your x's onto one side and all of your numbers onto the other side. So notice that your x squares cross out. So that's good because I don't want to really deal with that. All of my x's onto one side and all of my numbers with no x's on the other side. 
So negative 4x equals to negative 2, and then we divide both sides by negative 4 to get rid of that. I've isolated for my x, and x equals 2 1 half. I could always check my answer, actually. Take a half and put it into all of your x's, and see if your answer on this side matches your answer on that side. Okay, so how do you do these other ones? Because they look a little bit different. Well, technically it looks like there's two things over here, but you said you could only like cross multiply if you have one thing on each side. I know this looks like two things, but technically underneath it all, I could write a one. So this is a fraction and I can easily cross multiply now. This one over here, again, this one is a fraction. I could just write a, a one on the bottom, but technically these two are not one fraction. This is two fractions. So it's your job now to put those guys together so that they equal one fraction. As soon as they equal one fraction, you can cross multiply. So you're going to need a common denominator here. In this last one, this is one fraction on the left, which is great. And then this is one fraction on the other side. So you can cross multiply. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the solutions. What I'll do is I'll just slowly go down and then you can pause if you want to write it down or you wanted to try it yourself. Here's a solution for B. Cross multiplied, expanded, made sure all of the X's were on one side and all the numbers were on the other side, and then solve for X. C was the one where I actually needed to put together the denominators first. So, I mean, you know what, I did it in a different way, I actually skipped a step, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit confusing, but like I said, if you wanted to put them both together and make one fraction before cross multiplying, you can definitely do that. I did it a different way, okay, you should get the same answer, but I did it where, I mean, I've been taught the shortcut where if they all have the same denominators and there's an equal sign, as in this is an equation of some sorts, once all the denominators are the same, they can disappear. So all I write is my numerators. This is my shortcut. Like someone taught me this. I know how it works, but it's kind of difficult to explain in a video. So um, you can you can take my word for it, or you can just, like I said, put these guys together and cross multiply. Okay, so I got the answers of negative five and 18. And since I did have an x squared in there, that's something where you'd actually have to solve by factoring or doing the quadratic formula. Okay, so this last one, same thing, cross multiply, but because I had some cubes left over, you wanna make sure it's zero on one side and then you'll probably have to do some long division to break it down into the factors before you start to tell me what the answers are, okay? So this is basically all of um, the algebra for it. I mean, I can show you what a uh, word problem looks like. So this one is saying, let's see. Pythagoras is credited with the discovery of the golden triangle, sorry, rectangle. This is considered to be the rectangle with the dimensions that are most visually appealing. In a golden re uh, rectangle, the length and width are related by the proportion, and they gave you something like this. So notice, one equation with um, one fraction on one side and then another fraction on the other side. Now they're asking what must its width be if the length is 15. So here are the lengths and I'm just going to write 15 instead. And again, we're just going to cross multiply and solve for W because that's going to be our width. Okay, so 15 times 15 minus W is over here. W times W is over here. That gives you W squared and the um, binomial over here. Move everything onto one side so that you get a zero. And then, you know what? I couldn't figure out how to factor this nicely, so I actually just did the quadratic formula. And I got 9.3 and negative 24.3. Now we know that this can't be um, the width because you can't have a negative width. So this must be the width, and that's why I wrote it in a therefore sentence with meters at the end. Okay, so now you've seen how to solve for equations. In the next video, I'll show you how to solve for rational inequalities.